Okay, guys. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Uh, I'm going to show you a little bit about Onslong and how you can connect to Onslong through a web browser instead of using the uh, interface on the iPad, which is a little clunky. Um, this will allow you to edit songs and control your library um, for quick editing and importing, etc. So what you see on the left here is my iPad, and on the right you see my browser. In order to make this happen, both devices need to be connected to the same Wi-Fi network. That's the first thing. Uh, second thing you need to do is open up OnSong and make sure that there is a console. The console is a separate add-on. You'll have to buy that. It's a couple of bucks. But the button here, the, the little gear, will take you to the settings. And that's where you press on the console button, and it will show you what the web address is that we need to type in. So I'm going to do that. 192.168.1.15 one dot fifteen colon five zero seven six that gives me direct access to onsong through a web browser which is really uh, a, an easy way to do this so i'm going to do a simple song it's my one comfort which i noticed is not yet in my catalog and i need it to be there this is dustin kensrew and so the first thing i'm going to do is click plus i can see that it's not in here because i if i type in my one comfort and hit enter, it's not in my catalog. So we'll add it. Click the plus sign, type in the song title, My One Comfort, and the artist name. I've already got him in there. And create on song file. Then what you'll need to do is fill out the rest. This is in the key of G, so I'm going to set this to G. And there's no capo, no tempo. Uh, actually, there is a tempo. This is 175 beats a minute, which is actually, it should be half of that. So 175 divided by 2 is 87 and a half. So we'll do uh, 86. I'll do 87. And this is in 4.4, so click on that. You can see this is entering the metadata into the text file. Um, the duration we don't know yet. Uh, it's not necessarily important if, if we're not using a scrolling feature. But we do know the flow of the song, and I'll show you what that does um, a little bit later. Uh, rights management, all the information you need for the song can be put in here that displays on the projector but we'll get started here and we'll start by identifying what sections of the song exist the way we play it we have an intro always want to put a colon it makes it a heading we have verse one we have a chorus and we have a bridge and that's all that's in the song i'll show you why we don't need to repeat um, sections in a few seconds. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to type the first chord, which is a G, and that G is held for a certain number of measures, depending on how you want to play the song. And then I'm going to come down here and just start typing out the verses. And I'll go ahead and do that and come right back to you. Okay, I'm back. I'll give you a little bit of a rundown on these headings. These headings are used in many different ways. Um, they're not just to print out on the screen so you can see where they're going. They're also markers. They're markers for uh, MIDI cues, for automation, to, to automatically scroll to sections. They are also used uh, to divide up the text so that it can be displayed on the projector. Um, each section in an on-song song is going to be displayed depending on how you set it up and where you put it. Um, oftentimes there will be multiple verses, maybe multiple choruses, or is that even a plural? Chori? And there will be, uh, so for example, um, if there were two choruses in this song, we would need to name it Chorus 1 and Chorus 2. Not Chorus and Chorus 2, but Chorus 1 and Chorus 2 because uh, of the MIDI requirements in order to step or use a foot controller to jump to the right sections, they need to be named correctly. Um, otherwise, they'll cycle through. And I'll give you a quick example of what, what I mean. Let's say there is a verse one in a song. And uh, uh, let's go back to it. Let's say there is a chorus in a song and a chorus two. Okay? When the chorus is triggered through MIDI, the song page will jump to chorus. If that chorus is anywhere else in the song, the next time that chorus heading is triggered, it'll jump to the next instance of chorus. So it'll just continue to cycle through. So if the chorus is repeated three times during the song, 
and you want to be able to go specifically to one of those, you might want to name them Chorus 1, Chorus 2, and Chorus 3, even though they're all the same. But you'll have songs where there are really two different choruses with endings that are different or lengths or words that are even different. So you need to carefully plan out what these headings are actually going to be and think of those in light of how they're going to be controlled by Ableton or by a remote device to um, target those during live play with either a foot controller or uh, MIDI pad, triggers, you know, whatever it needs to be. Um, it's really important that that's planned out correctly. For this case, we now have our song typed out. It's real simple. And the insert tool, this is the insert palette, is going to show us that it's got some options here. We don't need to worry about labels. We've already typed them in. You could drop these in automatically just by clicking on them. We also need to look up here at the chord palette. There is only one chord available because that's all we've ever typed. Until you type a chord the first time, it will not show up for, for the uh, palette to, to easily drop it in. So if we put an F here, it's going to add it to the palette. Now we can click anywhere and click F, and it's going to insert that. This is a huge time saver. Um, this song does not have an F in it. Um, it does have a G. So oftentimes, or G, C, and an E minor and a D. So oftentimes what you'll do is you'll type through maybe one of the verses, manually insert the chords, and then uh, subsequent verses you can just simply reach over here and click. So my one comfort, that's a G, um, is that I. I is a C. We don't have that yet, so let's make a C. Now it shows up here. I am not my own, and that's a G. Um, I could type it in, or I can do that. I can click the button. Um, I was bought, that's a G. Let's put that there with blood, and I confess I belong, L, L-O-N-G, belong, and that's a C, to you alone on alone, G. Okay, so we've got the verse done. Now we need to jump to the chorus, and by the fathers, there's an E minor here. We don't have that yet, so we'll type in E minor. And then we have uh, good, which is a C, decree, G. Actually, that occurs on decree. I think that chord falls right after the word. Um, Jesus, you've delivered me. Jesus, you've delivered me by your spirit. That probably could go right there. Spirit set me is a C. Free, it happens a little bit right right about there. Free to follow is a D. We don't have that yet, so let's type it in. To follow you, and you is a G. All right? The bridge is Jesus you have, so C, taking hold of me, and that's a G. And then here we have a C and a G at the end. Okay, so all of the sections of the song are complete. Now, we need to lay the song out in our window here. Let me close this. We need to lay the song out in our window so that it flows the way we play it. I'm going to save this so it shows up on our screen. If I click Lead, then the browser leads the iPad. And when I click on a section... Let's open this song again. My one comfort. Okay, so now my iPad is showing what it needs to show. If I go up to the metadata palette and open that back up, you'll remember this is from the beginning. The flow is how we play the song. This flow, expand this just a little bit. This flow will determine what is displayed. Right now, there's no flow defined. So the iPad is going to display exactly what I typed. So if the chorus were to be playing again after the bridge, I could type it out again. But as you'll notice, nothing's happening here. And I've already typed the chorus. I don't need to type it again. I just need to refer to it. So how do we do that? So in the metadata palette, under flow, you're going to type in the flow of the song as you play it. So the first um, first part is going to be the intro. I'll just type I, comma. Then I'll type in 
V1, and then chorus, and then let's see, we do V1 again, and then chorus, and then bridge, and then chorus. Okay, so now what happens is the flow is put into the song, and anytime it runs into one of these uh, defined sections, it's going to pull the information from that section and display it on the song. So intro, intro. If we take this out, you'll notice the intro is going to go away. This allows you to customize a song very quickly by changing the flow or creating duplicates of the song with different flows depending on how you play them on a specific day. So this is intro. And what it does is it looks at the first characters of each word. So this is V1, C, B. If we had two choruses, this would need to be chorus one. And then this would need to also say C1, okay? And C2, and so on. So what we have here is intro, verse one, chorus. If I were to take these out, you can see that it removes everything from the song, but all of the data that we typed is still there. So I can come in and customize it. And as I add sections, it adds them to the song. If I wanted to do the chorus three times, it's going to put chorus, chorus, chorus. And the beauty of OnSong is that it scrolls, so you're not limited to page size. So we're going to do intro, verse 1, chorus, uh, verse 1 again, and chorus and bridge, and chorus, perhaps. And that lays out the entire song. Let's delete the bottom sections here. We don't need all this blank space. And so that puts the song together exactly as you like it. When you hit save, it saves it to your iPad. Now you have your song and it's complete. On your iPad, if you need to change the key or capo the song, we've written it in the original written key, which is important. It needs to be done that way. Then you come over to your iPad and under the settings, which is this icon right here, you can simply change what key it's in and all of the notes on the page will change with it. So if you wrote it in the key of G, but you want a capo at one, you can bring the capo up and it will change from the key of G to the key of A flat. When it's capoed, and this is a preference, it'll show the original key and it'll show the capoed key. That can be turned on or off. Um, and I can turn off capoing because we don't need it because we play this song in the key it was written this and now the song is saved it's saved to the iPad and it's done now we can pull it up anytime and play it and that's basically um, how you edit a song through the on song console uh, straight into your iPad if you have any questions if you like the video give it a thumbs up um, leave your comments in the in the comment section below and subscribe to the channel and I'll look forward to seeing you again